Today is August, Sunday the 25th, and the problem's been very, very serious for the last few days. Officers are relativising for an institutional self up to 20 to 30 times a day. Now, I have spent over 16 years partially institutionalised or, or potentially fully institutionalised in a semi-robotic state or in a controlled state and spent eight, eight long years in severe pain and agony in a critical condition. This has been quite a see eight long years of being in every minute or every day being in a critical state, in a very serious acute state because of officer misconduct. This is the final video for August, concluding the inevitable and unavoidable final hunger strike against misconducts within the National Probation and South Yorkshire Police for misuse of institutionalisation and a vast array of other offences that are all arrestable crimes, that are unavoidable arrestable crimes. Over the years, I have suffered brutal, extreme, barbaric and very sinister and cruel, inhumane torture. I've suffered degrading, humiliation, and a vast array. My life's been controlled every minute of every day by officers in a controlled state to be used as a punch bag. I've been physically and brutally assaulted on over 30 to 40 occasions whilst in a controlled state. It means officers have used me in a controlled state to get assaulted by common crooks or random individuals to emasculate somebody or humiliate somebody's power in a controlled state. This is illegal. I have been forced in a controlled state into homosexual role plays, acts and sexual acts against my will and without my consent. This is to, again, emasculate somebody and humiliate somebody, to degrade them, to degrade the individual and to humiliate the individual's power. Thus, in some cases, gaining power the self by committing crime against somebody. I have been forced, I have suffered some of the worst pain and agony and been forced to endure the serious pain and agony now for a long, long time, for well over 10 years, because the individuals have brought an institutional self forward. An, institu an institutional self, when brought forward, can have serious physical impacts on the individual and causes severe pain and agony. I can assure anybody that's ever had this done to them without knowing that this is one of the most painful things that you could ever go through. It is absolutely excruciating. It's by far one of the most, it's the most painful thing I've ever felt and it has left me in a critical condition or a serious state now for over 10 years because of the serious pain. It has crushed my internal organs. It has pre prevented breathing almost, stopping breathing. It is crushing my internal organs to the point of where it's the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. That is no joke. I cannot believe the individuals have not been arrested. I have also had my ability to think for myself and my sex drives internalised. This means they have used mortification of self to internalise my sex drives and my ability to think. It means you are in a mindless, brain dead state. They have done this to relativise what they want through my conscience or my ability to think. The only way I can explain this to anybody that doesn't know what this is, your power or your ability to think for yourself gets internalised. Officers then use this or exploit this to relativise what they want through your ability to think for yourself and commit crime against you. This can only be explained as using somebody as a punch bag or using somebody to commit crime against legally. They will then use the alibi of drugs, mental health, disability, 
or some ailment or some common external factor. The fact of the matter is individuals will individuals within the justice system will incriminate or criminate your power or your ability to think by claiming that you are unfit to live in society. Therefore, they need to use mortification of self to get you in a better state. But this is not how this has been used. The individuals are using mortification of self and internalising your life, especially my life in this case, and committing crime against people, relativising deviant, illegal, degrading, humiliating and painful drives. I have had homosexuality flooded through me now up over hundreds of times. I have had degrading and humiliating incorrect relativizations going through my power thousands and thousands of times. An example being the process itself should be relativizing my children, girlfriend, marriage, education, work, or the basic use of it is just cooking, cleaning, simple tasks, because this is what it is used for. I can't think of a time in this entire 8 to 16 years that the officers have ever relativised anything of that nature. I have ended up with homosexuality relativised through it hundreds of times. Thousands and thousands of times I have got degrading and humiliating drives or relativizations going through my drives to fulfill the office individual officer's fantasies. Whether it's degrading, humiliating, offensive, sexual humiliation, despite what nature it's from or what nature it is, it's illegal. It's got nothing to do with society, it conforms to society or my life. This is by far some of the worst sadistic third world torture I have ever seen and it has gone on now for such a long time that I do not believe that this po it's possible to get justice. The relevant justice for this period of time and the crime I've been subject to is probably at least three to five officers imprisoned and a very, very, very strong systematic change our approach to the way officers have access to your information, the way they can use your information, and the ways that they can gather your information. As well as that, laws need to be implemented or put into place to ensure that these individuals cannot exploit or misuse the process to cause harm or significant pain to others. In, in other words, they shouldn't be using or exploiting the process to use people as a punch bag with drugs or mental health, spurious drugs or mental health, labels being used as an immunity card or, or for, f as an alibi for them to do what they like. There needs to be laws in place to ensure these offenders within the South Yorkshire Police and Probation Service get brought to justice when they are committing crimes against people. When they are using people as a punch bag or using people in a controlled state to get humiliated and assaulted over 30 to 40 occasions. When they are internalising people's sex drives to the point where it's in excruciating pain and it has prevented them having sex for over six years. Sexual intercourse for over six years. So to conclude this video, next month is September. And on the channel, I've got videos from August 2020. It means it's been four years, over four years. And the officers have done nothing but torture me every single minute of every day. It has cost me every single minute of every day of my best years of my life. This has now been going on for a very long time. Therefore, concluding the video, next month I'm on hunger strike. I've been homeless now for well over a year, 13, 14 months. I went 10 months without money recently, without one penny whatsoever, without even touching my bank account, whilst homeless, which has left me... Anybody that's homeless for 13, 14 months and going 10 months without money is serious. They're in a serious state. They're not really going to have much of a life. I've also had my... I've not had sexual intercourse in six years. 
I've not been, never been married, not got children, never been in a sexual relationship. I've never obtained or gained a higher level of education, which is what I've been supposed to have been trying to achieve for over 15 years. And I've still not got a mortgage, that's the whole point. No relevant level of education, no girlfriend, no sexual intercourse, no work in, six, in five years, no sexual intercourse in six years, still no education, no marriage, no mortgage, been homeless for 13, 14 months, had no money in 10 months, and I've been in severe pain and agony, crippling, acute pain and critical agony, with my entire life internalised for over eight years. Today, Friday the 23rd of August, and I'm absolutely exhausted. I don't know if you can tell by my eyes, but I've had very limited sleep because of officers misusing the institutionalisation process and manipulating the process to cause severe pain and agony all night. It's been like this for a couple of days. I am absolutely exhausted and shattered. But the problem still continues as it has done every day for eight years. Frequent relativizations into an institutional self that's degrading, humiliating, potentially painful, or, or, and definitely illegal. Definitely illegal, causing severe pain and agony. I've been in absolute agony. It's up to 20 times a day. Officers, especially probation officers, still having probation officers still having full, as they have done for a long period of time, access to me and my family's lives without permission and without due correct jurisdiction. This is having a serious and negative impact on somebody's life. I've made it clear that this is unlawful access and disclosure of information for the illegal rights. They feel, feel as though they have got the jurisdiction to have. It's illegal. It's, this problem's still persisting. It's still going on, despite the years and years of endless complaints. It's complaints originally started in 2016, and it's now 2024, so that's eight years worth of complaints, and they're completely ignoring it and still proceeding. It's cost me every minute or every day, and the best years of my life. It's completely destroyed somebody's life basic entry-level probation officers going into my life as a member of the public for some of it without without any convictions, without any court appearances, feeling as though they're entitled to have full access or disclosure to somebody's life. And they feel as though they've got the right and full immunity to commit crime against somebody. It's incorrect and it's an imprisonable offence. I've made it very clear that this is an imprisonable offence, but this still failing to follow for any kind of misconduct charges or any kind of or any charges whatsoever regarding misconduct even though it's outright destroyed somebody's life and cost somebody the best years of their life it's inevitable final protests on hunger strike next month and now at 31 years old it's been inevitable for quite some time it's been happening frequently for over 10 years so illegal. Uh, these officers, especially the officers within the National Probation, should have been arrested and should have been held accountable for the crimes they've committed against people, especially members of the public. It's illegal. I've suffered some of the most brutal, horrific, and inhumane torture and misconduct by officers working within the probation surface in South Yorkshire Police for an extended period of time. They've broken quite a, a considerable amount of laws by doing this. An institutional self being open on Sunday and the process being manipulated to cause severe pain and agony is an imprisonable crime. As well as that, disclosure of information or allowing probation officers or low level probation officers into your human rights or into your private life as a member of the public. Whether it's with or with without the intent to humiliate or degrade. It makes no difference. The matter is it's an illegal crime and it's having a significant impact on people's lives.
I've been forced into homosexual role plays, homosexual degrading. I have been controlled in a robotic state into sexual humiliation and sexual degrading by officers working within the probation service. I have suffered sexual degrading and sexual humiliation by officers without my consent and forced into role plays of a homosexual nature by officers in a controlled state to humiliate. I've also been forced into serious humiliation non-sexually and de significant degrading on a lot of occasions by officers in a controlled state and I mean a lot, a lot of occasions over the last eight years. Some of the worst and brutal humiliation that's imprisonable, no doubts whatsoever, it can put every single one of the officers in prison. Some of the most brutal, inhumane and horrific humiliation in a controlled state by officers. They've almost ta taken full control of me in a controlled state and used me as a punch bag to be completely humiliated in a controlled state. I've suffered some of the worst humiliation and degrading that you could pos the public could never even perceive it as possible because of how, how much they're getting away with. They're blaming it on drugs, mental health, or other deviant, spurious, or synthetic labels that they feel as though they can use as an alibi for full immunity. But the fact of the matter is, this is significant barbaric and inhumane humiliation on potentially hundreds of occasions in a controlled state. This is very serious misconduct. Officers should not be keeping human beings in a controlled robotic state and controlling them into humiliating acts, whether it's sexual or non-sexual. And if it's happened on hundreds of, potentially hundreds of occasions, especially on tens of occasions, these individuals need to be held accountable for the crimes that they're committing. This is no doubts whatsoever. Misuse or improper use or manipulation of the use of institutionalisation is an imprisonable crime. It's not just misconduct or policy bending or rule bending or policies within their organisations. It's actually an imprisonable crime prescribed by law. And these individuals feel as though they're entitled to break these laws and they feel as though they're immune to prosecution. And there's no doubts I can honestly say now that I've been a victim of serious misconduct by probation officers and South Yorkshire Police significant degrading, significant sexual humiliation and significant illegal misconduct on the basis I've been left in severe pain and agony. I've suffered some of the worst and brutal inhumane agony you could imagine. I could not actually start to actually explain or somewhat tell somebody, especially in the public, how serious this misconduct is. The amount of times that I've been left in severe pain and agony that is brutal, inhumane or arrestable is within the hundreds, if not potentially the thousands over the last 15 years because of officers misusing or manipulating the institutionalisation process to rel relativise what they want. They feel as though they're entitled to do what they want at people's expense and most of the time it's at the public's expense. They create their own synthetic mental health and drug labels but with people in a controlled state and feel as though they can rationalise their own behaviour when torturing them. It's completely disgusting. I have suffered some of the worst inhumane humiliation and degrading by probation officers going into my human rights that nobody could ever imagine. They've gone into every aspect of my life and controlled every aspect of my life to completely humiliate me. And I could not really ever get justice for this. There's not really any justice that you can give somebody. I've thought about what I, what could make this right and what could correct this issue. And I don't believe that at this age now from the damage that they've caused, that it's actually possible. A significant amount of compensation. I don't believe you could even put a price on it or a number on it. I mean, at 31 year old now, some of the brutal and inhumane treatment that I've suffered and the degrading now, the money that you would have to in compensation you have to give me it's i don't know if it's even possible to do that it's in the could potentially be more than in the millions and even then i don't think you could ever recover from the amount of humiliation even if the even if the perpetrators get put behind bars with a significant compensation fee i still don't know if it'd ever be enough because of the inhumane treatment that i've gone through
this is very serious. I cannot believe that these individuals have not been held accountable for relativising deviant and illegal drives through somebody's institutional self for so long and feel as though they're entitled to do so without any prosecution and they've got full immunity to to do what they want. And they're not being out, they're not being arrested for it. Uh, I'm on hunger strike next month on se in September. It's nearly September now, it's the end of August, so I'm just preparing. I've been in the gym preparing and stuff, trying to get healthy and trying to somewhat gain some strength to go on my final and last hunger strike. I've hunger strike now frequently over the last eight years since 2016 and this problem still persisting and I've made it very clear to all officers on every occasion of hunger strike, whether it's three days, eight weeks or three weeks, it makes no difference. I've done it frequently, over 10 times potentially and even 20 times. And I've made it clear every time to the officers involved that this is this is in protest over misuse of institutionalisation and probation officers gaining access to my private life as a level one officer and it's completely humiliating. Uh, they're gaining access to private parts of my life and it's an arrestable crime. These individuals need to be held accountable for what they're doing. As well as that, they're doing very, very high risk criminality. They've internalised sex drive, sex power. They've internalised all my ability to get married or have children. I've now had to live with the fact that I'm not getting children or getting married now since they had a 23 year old and my 31. And that's a massive decision for a probation officer or a police officer to make at my expense, to say that, to make the decision in their office without any knowledge to me that they're going to internalise my sex drives or internalise my marriage into homosexuality or into anything whatsoever, whether it's into homosexuality or indifferent, just to make the choice that I'm now going to have a restricted, if not non, non apparent sex life whatsoever or sex power whatsoever, without any convictions related to this kind of stuff is barbaric, it's crazy. For a bog entry level probation officer to make this decision at my expense at 23 year old is without any convictions related to this is beyond crazy. Uh, I believe that these individuals should be arrested. I cannot believe it's impossible to really portray or start to explain to somebody how actually crazy it is, how much they think that they can get away with. They feel as though they can do what they want at people's expense. And this is not the case. These, they, they haven't got full immunity. They cannot do what they want in somebody's institutional self. They cannot go into the public and internalise somebody's sex drive at 15 year old. At 23 year old, whether you're a convicted criminal or, or just a member of the public, they haven't really got the jurisdiction or power to make that decision. Uh, if you've not, it doesn't matter whether you've got criminal convictions or not. These are entry level university, university students that are making a massive decision with somebody's life to say that they're going to internalize somebody's sex power or sex drives. It's almost leaving somebody disabled. This is. The price that you could put on stuff like that is massive. Um, as I've said, next month's my final hunger strike. This has been going on for years. It has, they've been relativising what they want in an institutional self, causing severe pain and agony every single day now for over eight years. I've lost every day of my life, the best years of my life, from 23 to 31 because officers have been using me as a punch bag internally because they internalise my entire life to do what they want at my expense. They've in turn sex drives, they've in turn marriage, they've in turn my children. And it's been absolutely disgusting. I've suffered some of the most horrific, barbaric and inhumane, degrading and humiliation you could imagine. It's illegal. Today, Friday the 23rd of August, and I'm absolutely exhausted. I don't know if you can tell by my eyes, but I've had very limited sleep because of officers misusing the institutionalization process and manipulating the process to cause severe pain and agony all night. It's been like this for a couple of days. I'm absolutely exhausted and shattered. But the problem still continues as it has done every day for eight years. Frequent relativizations into an institutional self that's degrading, humiliating, potentially painful, 
Oh, oh, and definitely illegal, definitely illegal, causing severe pain and agony. I've been in absolute agony. It's up to 20 times a day. Officers, especially probation officers, still having, probation officers still having full, as they have done for a long period of time, access to me and my family's lives without permission and without due, correct jurisdiction. This is having a serious and negative impact on somebody's life. I've made it clear that this is unlawful access and disclosure of information for the illegal rights. They feel, feel as though they have got the jurisdiction to have. It's illegal. It's, this problem's still persisting. It's still going on, despite the years and years of endless complaints. It's, complaints originally started in 2016. And it's now 2024, so that's eight years worth of complaints and they're completely ignoring it and still proceeding. It's cost me every minute or every day and the best years of my life. It's completely destroyed somebody's life. Basic entry-level probation officers going into my life as a member of the public for some of it without, without any convictions, without any court appearances. Feeling as though they're entitled to have full access or disclosure to somebody's life and they feel as though they've got the right and full immunity to commit crime against somebody. It's incorrect and it's an imprisonable offence. I've made it very clear that this is an imprisonable offence, but they're still failing to follow for any kind of misconduct charges or any kind of, or any charges whatsoever regarding misconduct, even though it's outright destroyed somebody's life and cost somebody the best years of their life. It's inevitable final protests on hunger strike next month and now at 31 years old it's been inevitable for quite some time it's been happening frequently for over 10 years so well there you go uh, these officers especially the officers within the national probation should have been arrested and should have been held accountable for the crimes they've committed against people especially members of the public it's illegal I've suffered some of the most brutal, horrific, and inhumane torture and misconduct by officers working within the probation surface in South Yorkshire Police for an extended period of time. They've broken quite a, a considerable amount of laws by doing this. An institutional self being open on Sunday and the process being manipulated to cause severe pain and agony is an imprisonable crime. As well as that, disclosure of information or allowing probation officers or low level probation officers into your human rights or into your private life as a member of the public. Whether it's with or with, without the intent to humiliate or degrade, it makes no difference. The matter is it's an illegal crime and it's having a significant impact on people's lives. I've been forced into homosexual role plays, homosexual degrading. I have been controlled in a robotic state into sexual humiliation and sexual degrading by officers working within the probation service. I've suffered sexual degrading and sexual humiliation by officers without my consent and forced into role plays of a homosexual nature by officers in a controlled state to humiliate. I've also been forced into serious humiliation, non-sexually, and de significant degrading on a lot of occasions by officers in a controlled state, and I mean a lot, a lot of occasions over the last eight years. Some of the worst and brutal humiliation that's imprisonable, no doubts whatsoever, it can put every single one of the officers in prison. Some of the most brutal, inhumane and horrific humiliation in a controlled state by officers. They've almost ta taken full control of me in a controlled state and used me as a punch bag to be completely humiliated in a controlled state. I've suffered some of the worst humiliation and degrading that you could poss the public could never even perceive it as possible because of how, how much they're getting away with. They're blaming it on drugs, mental health, or other deviant, spurious, or synthetic labels that they feel as though they can use as an alibi for full immunity. But the fact of the matter is, this is significant, barbaric, inhumane humiliation on 
potentially hundreds of occasions in a controlled state. This is very serious misconduct. Officers should not be keeping human beings in a controlled robotic state and controlling them into humiliating acts, whether it's sexual or non-sexual. And if it's happened on hundreds of, potentially hundreds of occasions, especially on tens of occasions, these individuals need to be held accountable for the crimes that they're committing. This is no doubts whatsoever. Misuse or improper use or manipulation of the use of institutionalisation is an imprisonable crime. It's not just misconduct or policy bending or rule bending or policies within their organisations. It's actually an imprisonable crime prescribed by law. And these individuals feel as though they're entitled to break these laws and they feel as though they're immune to prosecution. And there's no doubt I can honestly say now that I've been a victim of serious misconduct by probation officers and South Yorkshire Police significant degrading, significant sexual humiliation and significant illegal misconduct on the basis I've been left in severe pain and agony. I've suffered some of the worst and brutal inhumane agony you could imagine. I could not actually start to actually explain or somewhat tell somebody, especially in the public, how serious this misconduct is. The amount of times that I've been left in severe pain and agony that is brutal, inhumane or arrestable is within the hundreds, if not potentially the thousands over the last 15 years because of officers misusing or manipulating the institutionalisation process to rel relativise what they want. They feel as though they're entitled to do what they want at people's expense and most of the time it's at the public's expense. They create their own synthetic mental health and drug labels but with people in a controlled state and feel as though they can rationalise their own behaviour when torturing them. It's completely disgusting. I have suffered some of the worst inhumane humiliation and degrading by probation officers going into my human rights that nobody could ever imagine. They've gone into every aspect of my life and controlled every aspect of my life to completely humiliate me. And I could not really ever get justice for this. There's not really any justice that you can give somebody I've thought about what I, what could make this right and what could correct this issue. And I don't believe that at this age now from the damage that they've caused, that it's actually possible. A significant amount of compensation. I don't believe you could even put a price on it or a number on it. I mean, at 31 year old now, some of the brutal and inhumane treatment that I've suffered and the degrading now, the money that you would have to, in compensation, you'd have to give me, it's, I don't know if it's even possible to do that. It's in the could potentially be more than in the millions. And even then, yeah, I don't think you could ever recover from the amount of humiliation. Even if the even if the perpetrators get put behind bars with a significant compensation fee, I still don't know if it'd ever be enough because of the inhumane treatment that I've gone through. This is very serious. I cannot believe that these individuals have not been held accountable for relativising deviant and illegal drives through somebody's institutional self for so long and feel as though they're entitled to do so without any prosecution and they've got full immunity to, to do what they want. And they're not being, they're not being arrested for it. Uh, I'm on hunger strike next month on se in September. It's nearly September now, it's the end of August, so I'm just preparing. I've been in the gym preparing and stuff, trying to get healthy and trying to somewhat gain some strength to go on my final and last hunger strike. I've hunger strike now frequently over the last eight years since 2016, and this problem's still persisting, and I've made it very clear to all officers on every occasion of hunger strike, whether it's three days, eight weeks, or three weeks it makes no difference i've done it frequently over 10 times potentially and even 20 times and i've made it clear every time to the officers involved that this is this is in protest over misuse of institutionalization and probation officers gaining access to my private life as a level one officer and it's completely humiliating uh they're gaining access to private parts of my life and it's an arrestable crime these individuals need to be held accountable for what they're doing as well as that, they're doing very, very high-risk criminality. They've internalised sex drive, sex power. They've internalised all my ability to get married or have children. I've now had to live with the fact that I'm not getting children or getting married now. 
since they had a 23 year old and my 31 and that's a massive decision for a probation officer or a police officer to make at my expense to say that to make the decision in their office without any knowledge to me that they're going to internalize my sex drives or internalize my marriage into homosexuality or into anything whatsoever whether it's into homosexuality or indifferent just to make the choice that i'm now going to have a restricted if not non non apparent sex life whatsoever or sex power whatsoever without any convictions related to this kind of stuff is barbaric it's crazy for a bog entry level probation officer to make this decision at my expense at 23 year old is without any convictions related to this is beyond crazy uh, i believe that these individuals should be arrested i cannot believe it's impossible to really portray or start to explain to somebody how actually crazy it is how much they think that they can get away with they feel as though they can do what they want at people's expense and this is not the case these they, they haven't got full immunity they cannot do what they want in somebody's institutional self they cannot go into the public and internalize somebody's sex drive at 15 year old at 23 year old whether you're a convicted criminal law or just a member of the public they haven't really got the jurisdiction or power to make that decision it's, if you've not it doesn't matter whether you've got criminal convictions or not these are entry-level university, university students that are making a massive decision with somebody's life to say that they're going to internalize somebody's sex power or sex drives it's almost leaving somebody disabled this is the price that you could put on stuff like that is massive um as I've said, next month's my final hunger strike. This has been going on for years. It has, they've been relativising what they want in an institutional self, causing severe pain and agony every single day now for over eight years. I've lost every day of my life, the best years of my life, from 23 to 31, because officers have been using me as a punch bag internally because they internalise my entire life to do what they want at my expense. They've interned sex drives, they've interned marriage, they've interned my children. And it's been absolutely disgusting. I've suffered some of the most horrific, barbaric and inhumane, degrading and humiliation you could imagine. It's illegal. Today is Sunday, August the 12th, and officers are still proceeding with mortification of self every day, causing severe pain and harm or agony to be a physical pain and agony up to 10 to 20 times a day whilst relativising illegal, incorrect, painful, degrading, humiliating relativizations for an institutional self that has completely ruined my life. They have now proceeded or continued to tie or de-character or internalise my entire sex drives, my ability to get married, the feeling you get when, when, when you fall when, in romantic or intimate relationships, they've decaracterized it all and internalised it. Uh, I'll be quite honest, I'm on hunger strike next month and I had no real option anyway. But I started making videos all in 2019, but on the channel, I've got videos in August 2020. It's now August 2024 and this problem's still going on this problem's still persisting i'm still subject to severe high risk misconduct up to 20 times a day completely destroying my life i have now documented online on youtube from august 2020 to august 24 now and every single minute of every day has been hell ever since i've not had a sexual i've not had sexual intercourse in that time or I've not had sexual intercourse in that time. I've not been in a sexual relationship in that time. I've not been in work, long-term work, permanent work in that time. I've not been on holiday in that time. I've not gained a dec decent or relevant level of education in that time. I've not got married in that time. I've been homeless now for a year or over a year, 13 months. So. If I've been making those complaints online and I've not had sexual intercourse within that time, it's illegal. I started making videos at 26, I'm now 31. 
not had sexual intercourse in over over six, six years since I've had sexual intercourse because they've decarried my sex drives, man, completely dead. They've internalised every single bit of my sex drives and killed my sex drives, killed it. It's illegal. They've internalised my full sex drives as a bog standard entry level probation officer or police officer. It means I'm never going to have sexual intercourse, not get married, and never have children. They've decided it on their own. I'm going on hunger strike next month, and it'll be the final hunger strike, and I've made it very clear. Frequently, endless times. Today is Friday, August 23rd, and I've just been prevented from ending the gym for no apparent reason. This is, I had no entry, despite having no reasons whatsoever for not being allowed any entry. But this, the no entrance to the gym situation, is one of the hundreds, if not thousands, of unanswered, out of conform or out of character scenarios, situations or mishaps that happens in my everyday life. This kind of stuff happens when you're at work, you randomly get, a boss will randomly walk up to you at work and say you're sacked for no reason, just saying the work's not good enough and it's questionable. The reason's not good enough, the work's perfect and it's questionable as to why they've said it. That's just another example as to what these scenarios are. It's the same as I don't know, it's happened thousands of times. But I, it's happened again recently actually. My, one of my YouTube videos randomly got taken down for breaching policies. And it's just like, in these kind of scenarios, unfortunate accidents or unfortunate dis annoying interferences in your life or these situations that are 
inconvenient and severely annoying that have to get sorted out. It might happen in the regular, normal day life once or twice. I've gone through this every single day now, hundreds if not, like I said, thousands of times. And they'll proclaim it's because you're criminal and the system don't like criminals. It's because they control every day of your life. I remember, I, I could have, it's happened that many times now, I forgot hundreds if not thousands of times. Unanswerable, out of conform or out of character situations, unfortunate accidents, uh, questionable mishappenings or interference, or just, like I said, out of conform and questionable happenings in everyday life. It's regarding every aspect of your life and it's institutionalization and interference from officers using institutionalization. This isn't paranoia. It's um, the point of the matter is it's harassment and involvement in every aspect of your life, controlling your life. They say it's to con the whole point in sociology, it's explained that it's to degrade the individual or to run the individual into the ground and so they're in a controlled state by mortification of self that they're supposed to be using in institutes, but they believe they can do it out in the public. It's illegal. Either way, regardless of that, the institutional self on me that they've been using mortification of self in has been, I haven't slept in days. I am in absolute agony. Regardless of the interference in my life, I am in absolute agony. It's happened over 50 times relativizations through an institutional self in the last 48 hours. I haven't slept. I've been awoken over 11 to 15 times. I've absolutely shattered. I don't, you can't tell on this video, but I, I've, all, I've not slept at all. I've been woken that many times. Oh, and it's because of institutionalization and officers misusing institutionalization to relativize what they want that's why you don't really that's why you don't internalize somebody's power and proclaim that they're criminal or mentally ill because officers run off with your life in the system and do what they want to you they'll relativize homosexuality they'll relativize p stuff that's painful and agonizing i remember about six years ago walking to work and within that within the hour walking to work did relativize two to three I see three males or whatever they are we ain't space or an hour straight through my main drives let me just explain something in this video the use of institutionalization and institutional self is to relativize day-to-day -day activities modern norms customs traditions so an institutional self for example is open on somebody that's probably struggling with mental health issues or incapabilities are, are dealing with day-to-day -day life and it is used on them to relativize cooking cleaning education work any kind of disabilities they may have or problems with learning any kind of behavioral issues or any kind of issues they've got genetically that could be solved or addressed it's for psychiatric involvement and for control purposes so if, they, if these genetics or this person's liable to be criminal or behave in a way that's illegal or unlawful let's say this process could be used on them to get them get those problems addressed and get them in a correct or, or more accepting standard of, of living or whatever else right now let me just explain this is i have to think because this is a, <laughs> this is not what these iris criminals within the justice system are using it for they're using it to relativize what they want they're re relativizing almost they've pulled all my marriage out at a young age of 23 and all they have done now for the last eight years is put it into random homosexuality and random stuff. They'll put it into random black blocks in gym. <laughs> they'll put it into random black blocks in gym. They'll put it into random random gays in gay bars. Or they'll put it into transvestites that are random. They'll do what they want. They put it into whatever they like and they think it's clever. So you walk around with the power or the feeling where you, that you'd be happy and gleeful where you're supposed, that's supposed to be the feeling of your marriage, your wife, your girlfriend or whatever, or your children. And you don't feel like that because officers as usual as a punch bag and they've relativized random IC3s walking to work three times. Random Somalis and blacks that have gone straight through your main drive that's for your girlfriend or your wife and you just think, well, at some point I've got to get in the system and stop these Irish criminals from messing around with my institutional self. That I've not given them permission or any, I'm not even supposed to have knowledge it's on me, by the way. While, I, while I'm sat walking around with homosexuality in my main drives. 
and they're, and they're not being they're not being done for it. They're not being arrested for this criminal act that's now cost me my life. I now need to be deinstitutionalized for over 16 years because all officers have done is use me as a punch bag and internalize what they want. They just relativize what they want all day, degrading, humiliating illegal acts all day for an institutional self. It means I'm being used as a punch bag and I blame it on drugs or mental health. In other words, ladies and gents, or to whoever who's watching, mental health and criminality is a, a deviant label integrated into society. And all it is is just so that people can use you as a punch bag or torturing it has been every day, and this is no joke, every single day and half for eight years they've relativised what they want in my institutional self. It has left me in that much agony and pain. And like I said, last few nights they've relativised the illegal, degrading or humiliating drives that will put somebody in jail. If you were to, if you were to act in a, in a way or with the actions or behaviour that they're relativising through me, you get arrested in jail. If you, if you act in a way or if you behave in a way like they are in my institutional self, relativising homosexuality, if, you, if you're homophobic to somebody, for example, or if you leave somebody in physical pain and agony for assault. So, you're, I, I really two criminal acts. You're homophobic to somebody verbally, online or in person, in writing, whatever else. Or you assault somebody, or you leave somebody in physical pain and agony. Whether it's deliberate or not, there's still liability. But if you leave somebody in severe pain and agony, right? These two acts, it could be classed as assault, or potentially the homophobia could be classed as slander. Or it could be classed as various domestic purposes. Either way, these are two criminal illegal acts. Officers are committing this crime against me in an institutional, institutional self. Times 10 that, 20 times a day. Therefore, ladies and gents, I'm trying to conclude or surmise the fact that an institutional self that's classed as deviant or mentally ill is only used as a punch bag by officers to fulfil their own fantasies so they can commit crime against you. The fact of the matter is I've been in absolute agony for two days and that there's been relativizations for an institutional self over 20 times and any single one of them could put somebody in prison if I was to act like that or behave like that in society. It means whoever's using the institutional self or relativizing what's supposed to be day-to-day -day conforming activities isn't doing that and what they are relativizing is more serious than any crime that you could commit in, in society. Therefore, I can only conclude an institutional self or mental illness or drug use is just an alibi or potentially a synthetic, spurious or integrated label that is exploited by officers working within the just, justice system or other to commit crime against somebody. It's just a criminal act. It's a legal, not necessarily a loophole, but just a, a legal way of committing crime without actually saying it. They get perverted pleasure out of it. They get deluded power out of it. Delusions of grandeur. They think that the gods, they're undercutting gods as such because they're committing crime against people, like I've said. Hundreds, if not thousands of times I've had involvement in my life and it's had a negative impact on it over countless times. So if you think over, over hundreds, if not thousands of times, it's had a negative involvement in your life that's had a negative, significantly negative impact. And any single one of those incidents could potentially leave the perpetrators in jail for quite a long time. If you were to behave like that in society, you'd be in jail. But they've done it hundreds, if not thousands of times because they do it using the alibi of institutionalization and control. Like I said, therefore, I can only conclude that this is not only illegal, but it should have been addressed years ago. These individuals should have been arrested and locked up a long, long time ago. They, they feel as though they've got full immunity to do as they like, and they haven't done that. It's costing people their lives. So that, that video, all in all, totals over 100 minutes this month or whatever else, and it's basically just stating the same thing. It's been taken where I've been in severe pain or agony most of the time. It states I've been almost 14 months. It states I've not been in permanent stable employment in five years. It states I've not had sexual intercourse in six years. It states I've not got a relevant level of education still. It states I've never been married, bought a home, or had children, or had an holiday. And all these things are correct. And this is all due or because of misuse of institutionalization by officers working within the justice system and it's cost me the best years of my life i've complained from 2016 to 2024 
that's over eight years and I go on hunger strike in a couple of weeks in September so that's the August video leading up to it today is the last day of August August the 30th 2024 and I've been not been to sleep yet because officers have been relativizing for an institutional self all night as they have done for years it's just causing severe pain and agony as I've said they've, they've internalized my power to relativize what they want through it and treat me as a punch bag to fulfill their own perverted fantasies they basically commit crime against you using institutionalization and pretend it's drugs mental health or external factors it's a way they can commit crime against people or they get away with committing crime against people and proclaim it's their job to make people mentally ill I have had my entire life internalised and left me in severe pain now for absolutely years for officers to use me as a punch bag relativising what they like for an institutional self it's absolutely disgusting I've left a brief description in the video as to what this is officers within South Yorkshire Police and National Probation using integrated labels as a alibi or an immunity card as such or an immunity excuse to do what they want make their own stories up with people in a controlled state and it's cost me the best years of my life people need to get in the system and access the system to defend themselves because officer misconduct is rife in the field as though they can do what, what they want people need to get or members of the public or criminals need to get in the justice system and get their own business or get their own power out because that officers feel as though they've got full access to people's rights and they can just turn people into a punch bag I have now suffered some of the most brutal and horrific torture that imaginable you couldn't imagine it it's a crime against humanity without a doubt for the years and years of torture I've suffered whilst being with my life internalised being used as a punch bag I have suffered some of the most disgusting degrading internal degrading officers have used me as a punch bag in they've relativized homosexuality they've relativized painful and agonizing drives they've used me in a control state to get assaulted over 30 to 40 times they've forced me into homosexual role plays they've internalized my sex drives and my sex power so i can't have sex They've relativised for every single woman I've ever met or girl I've ever met into having no sexual relations. They've complete controlled every aspect of my life in a controlled state. They've been relativising now through my power for years, causing severe pain and agony. It means they're getting away with committing crime against somebody whilst internalising the power without being tried in court. To so go into somebody's human rights is an imprisonable crime. And they are doing that every day by going into your power and committing crime and relativizing through it. Relativizing perverse drives, relativizing, like I said, homosexuality. They're relativizing what they want through it. They, relative, they internalize your life and put you through severe breaking sessions daily, internally, into where they relativize what they want. It's absolutely disgusting. It's an imprisonable crime. And for the amount of time or the period of time it's gone on for now, it's a crime against humanity for how long I've suffered for. I have suffered now in a critical condition for eight years because of officers internalizing my drives and committing crime against me internally. Like I said, they'll, they feel as though drugs or substance misuse or mental health is a legitimate alibi for committing crime against somebody and they get away with it. I have suffered some of the most horrific, and I mean horrific, torture. They've left me unable to move in severe crippling pain for weekends to get perverted power out of it. They've relativised all my sexuality through my main drives. I've got thousands and thousands of drives going for an institutional self that's incorrect causing severe pain and agony that's crippling. And this will be covered up as drug misuse, external factors, mental health or other. And it's a lot of rubbish. They'll, blame it. They'll probably blame it on heartburn. Heartburn or pollen susceptibility or some kind of pointless comical almost humorous alibi that they get away with because nobody regulates it it means i've gone for eight years of being in a complete brain dead and mindless state with nobody regulating it 
and uh, the regulation to it just gets put down to a simple excuse. Un up to 100 times a day, I'm being physically, I'm going through physical braking sessions. If you want to know what braking sessions are, you can look online. It's where you degrade an individual and commit crime against an individual and they do it internally. I have suffered some of the worst degrading that you could imagine. It is absolute eight years. It can, it's a crime against humanity for how long I've suffered for and been tortured for. Either way, to conclude the video, it's the last day of August and September I go on hunger strike for the last time. That's next month. It's September, mid-September I go on hunger strike for the final time and I've been doing this now for eight years, hunger striking. But I believe now it's getting that serious because it's up to 100 times a day they're relativising through my power. It's disgusting. I'm being a victim of crime up to 100 times a day because their officers manipulating the institutionalisation process to cause severe pain or harm and it's, it's destroyed my life. I can't get a life whatsoever. They're relativising what they want through my power to get physical, to get perverted, sadistic or deluded power out of it and they're not being held accountable and it's not being classed as misconduct. So it will be the last hunger strike in September and it's been going on now for eight years. It's inevitable. Briefly explain this video. It is a long video taking over August 2024. Four years after the initial video that I've posted from August 2020. I've started making videos quite a while before that, but this is documenting a problem that's persisted over 16 years. And the problem is institutionalisation and officer misconduct within South Yorkshire Police and National Probation Service Sheffield. And this is on the basis that the individuals or the high risk individuals uh, feel as though they've been granted full immunity to use mortification of self however they want without any consequences and without being arrested. This has completely destroyed my life and these videos are just videos that I've made that realistically I wouldn't have made but I've made them institutionalised and it basically states that they've used mortification of self as a torture method severe breaking sessions and misuse of information it is high risk misconduct and arrestable crime this has cost me the best years of my life and these videos document it today is monday 5th of august and officers within the probation service and South Yorkshire Police have decided they're going to decarter or use mortification of self on my sex power, my sex drives, my ability to get married and from that or with that the ability to have children. I have had my entire life internalised and officers have used that as an excuse to torture me every day, decade to an important parts of my life. I haven't had sexual intercourse in over six years. I've not been employed in permanent employment in around five years. I have been homeless now for over a year or 13 months. Today is Monday the 19th of August and the problem is still persisting as it has frequently for, week, for eight years. I put up with sadistic, perverted, degrading, painful degrading by officers. This is causing severe pain and agony. It's cost me every single day now for over eight years, every single minute or every day. I've lost the best years of my life because of this misconduct, this frequent and ongoing mortification of self that I've, that I've protested over for years, for over eight years, and it's still going on every single day. I think to the root cause of the problem or the conclusion regarding the problem is they've internalised my power and proclaimed that it's deviant, criminal, or mentally ill or impulsive in any in some kind of way 
and by interning it, they believe that they've prevented me from committing crime or other, committing crime or other, for whatever reason, I don't know, because they've never given me a reason. Whatever reason, they've internalised my power. So they felt as though they had right, correct jurisdiction and lawful rights to do this. But I've made it clear throughout the last eight years that this is causing severe pain and agony and it has cost me every minute of every day and left me in a critical state. It's therefore cost me, this has happened eight years ago and I'm now 31. So I was 23 at the time. I'm now 31 and it's cost me every single minute of every day since. So therefore I can only say they've ignored every single protest and complaint and proceeded to use mortification of self in an institutional self that's causing severe pain and agony with my power internalised. It, it's cost me every day. It's, I've not been employed now. I are in stable long-term employment now for over five years or around five years. Not been in a sexual relationship in, since forever, since my entire life. Not participated in sexual intercourse in six years. Not been in employment for five, not been in sexual intercourse in six. Been homeless now for over a year and still not gained a relevant level of education. So, no sexual intercourse in six years, no stable employment in five years, around five years, still no relevant ed education whatsoever, and I've been homeless for over a year. So, internalising somebody's power, leaving them in a critical state every minute or every day is obviously not being progressive for the individual. I've been tortured so severely and brutally because of officers pulling out my power and relativising what they want. I could not explain to anybody the agony, the brutality and the inhumane treatment I've been subject to every minute or every day for over eight years because of officers internalising my power and relativising what they want for an institutional self. It is that, that inhumane and degrading, it is illegal. I cannot believe that this has gone on for over eight years, costing me the best years of my life and the, the high-risk offenders within the probation service and South Yorkshire Police have not been arrested for these crimes. It has cost me every single day for over eight years in a critical state. It is absolutely disgusting. Today is August 21st, Wednesday. And officers, I'm in the gym at the moment, and officers have left a process on all the institutionalisation process to decite to uh, mortification of self, my power in the middle of the gym. It, what I'm trying to say by this is the institutional self is not just a mental concept whatsoever, it's a physical concept and it is used on the British public or the public in general to create a character that conforms with common norms, customs, traditions and societal expectations within the law. These are, uh, this is it, it's realistically or essentially yourself. It's the, it's the character or the personality of the individual. But it's not a mental concept, it's a physical concept that has a physical essence or power. Now, the process itself controls this. It relativizes everyday activities. So it relativizes your day to day activities, it relativizes parts of your character or attributes within your character, as it does everybody else in the public. However, when they classify somebody as criminal or mentally ill, they believe that what they are relativising is deviant or potentially not conforming with British customs or norms. So what the officers then do is they then adopt the job or create the job or create the, the problem by using the process to de-character or use mortification of self and de-character somebody. Now, in some cases, this can cause severe. This can cause severe problems for a human being. It can have serious negative implications if you pull somebody's power out, proclaiming it's deviant, criminal, or mentally ill, or potentially whatever it may be, potentially harmful or not in conform. If you decouch or use mortification of self. It can leave somebody. It can leave somebody completely incapable of anything. It can leave can lead to all sorts of complications. It can lead to a variety of different complications if officers use mortification of self on somebody. If you ever look at an homeless person or a tramp, they have undergone severe mortification of self and breaking sessions. 
they have been left with no self and no power over their own life to the point where they haven't got the ability or the the, the strength or the actual character or drives to go out and achieve work or achieve a normal standard of living because they've undergone mortification of self significantly. Now this happens every day, this happens majority of the days, but criminals and mentally ill undergo severe uh, mortification of self. And this is what's happening now. Uh, you can look up this stuff in sociology and whatever else and probably other books. But this is what's happening, been happening to me for a long, long time. Now, what's happening now to me today is I'm in the gym just trying to work out and do some basic resistance training and whatever else. And officers have left the institutionalization process on me because they've adopted the job of this. And they're pulling out large portions of my character or large attributes of my character, which is my power. Now this power is leaving me incapable of undergoing basic training or in, I've now been homeless for over a year. I've been homeless for 14 months. I've not been in proper work now for five years. I've not had a month of pay slip in five years. And this is because they've carried on with severe degrading, humiliation and mortification of self. They've continued breaking sessions for that long now. I've been left completely brain dead. I got left brain dead eight years ago and they've carried on doing it. And while the implications have been very significant, this is, you know, I've classified it as leaving somebody very, very, in such a bad state, it's unreal. Uh, I've lost all, I couldn't remember my own family at one point, eight years ago. I've, it took me years and years to try and rebuild some character back. And they still carried on doing it and it's just got worse and worse. I, if you, I remember eight years ago, struggling to remember my own name. And if you look on the YouTube channel, I made one in 2020, where I couldn't remember my own name on some days. So that's how far they'd gone by using mortification on, mortification of self on somebody's power. I got left in a state where I had no idea who my friendships are. I could, I could, on days I couldn't remember my own name. So, mortification itself isn't a joke, it's very serious. And when officers are running around with full power and immunity to do what they want with it, they're creating all sorts of criminal, deviant subcultures where they think they're entitled to pull out people's power. However, in conclusion to today's video, I'm in the gym right now, it's early morning and I'm struggling to complete basic sex. I've done loads of times in eight years ago in institutes and whatever else, basic. And it's because officers are, are pulling power out. It means that it's having a significant impact on my physical health. It's having a serious impact on my life, just as everything else is when you use mortification of self. Uh, it's an imprisonable crime. It's illegal to go into somebody's institutional self and feel as though you're entitled to decide to somebody, however you want. It's illegal, you can go to prison for it. I've made it clear it's serious Irish misconduct to the officers within the probation and within the South Yorkshire Police Office. I've made it clear to solicitors, I've made it clear to thousands and thousands of people, including MPs, parliamentary figures, lords. They all know that this is high risk misconduct. You've got no rights or jurisdiction in somebody's institutional self, pulling out power, sex drives, ability to work, ability to sleep, ability to think for yourself, your social standing, your, your power to get up or, or to under, undergo or take on basic day-to-day -day activities. You have no right to control somebody's life whatsoever and leaving somebody in a robotic state as to where you've got full control over them is illegal and it, you, you can go to prison. So I don't understand as to why these individuals are still still not being arrested for it. I, despite me making it clear to all all parties that I believe are res not just responsible, the knowledge of this being ha happening, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, in conclusion, it's now, as I've said at the beginning of the video, August the 21st and 2024 so it's august the 21st 2024 and if you look at the beginning of the channel on the videos playlist tab the first video i made was in august 2020 so that's four years ago and every single day between now and then four years ago it's continued up to 20 times a day serious high risk mortification of self it's this kind of mortification of self for that long. I mean, like I said before, I've not been in a sexual relationship in that time. I've not gained long-term employment or permanent employment in that time. 
I've not even gained a basic level of education in that time. I've not been homed in that time in my home on my own. I've not been married, I've not had children, I've not been on holiday. Um, I've not had a girlfriend in that time. So it's been quite a long time. And it is still continue with this significant level of mortification of self despite the countless complaints. So for me, it's misconduct, I've always said. I've made it clear to all parties involved it's significant misconduct. Therefore, uh, I can only conclude that this is August post 2024. August 16, Friday, and I'm in absolute physical agony. Um, walking down the street normally, and officers are using the process to cause severe agony and pain. I don't take any drugs, I shouldn't suffer with any mental health issues. But this will get covered up as both. I'm trying to get, on, I'm getting on my somewhat trying to survive, and officers are still relativizing or using mortification of self to cause serious pain, agony, or harm. It's absolutely agony, it's the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. This is now a long, long time since I've been on probation, a long time since I've had anything to do with police at all, and it still continues despite all the complaints and all the the messages and the, I've basically made it very clear that this is causing severe pain and agony of the institutional self and within the institutional self they are frequently using mortification of self and relativizing deviant, degrading, humiliating drives. Sunday the 18th of August 2024 and officers are still using mortification of self I'm just walking down the street, getting on my life and using mortification of self that's causing severe pain and agony. Severe pain and agony throughout the day. In other words, they've internalized my life to use it as a punch bag. Uh, symbolic interactionism plays a part. In other words, they internalize your power that causes severe pain and agony. That then creates a playground for officers to create scenarios or situations within your life that could potentially cause severe pain or agony while your life's internalized it means life behind a looking glass becomes a very devious and dangerous game because officers all day every day mess around with your life internalized relativizing what they want that causes pain and agony a large portion or a large amount of the institutional cell needs to be pulled back out and redoing correctly. There's potentially hundreds, if not thousands, of relativizations going in through an institutional self that's brought forward that's it agonizing in pain. And at this point now in my life I should be a self functioning, working, educated, sexually experienced, potentially married with children, individual, I'm almost disabled because I'm com completely disabled because they've internalised my entire life to use me as a punch bag. They've spent every single day doing nothing but relativising rubbish for an institutional self to keep possession of a human being. So they've kept possession of another human being. They're not doing anything. They're relativising rubbish for an institutional self to keep possession of somebody. They've pulled out every single bit of my sex drives at 23 year old. They've pulled... I can, I can get sexually aroused as such... Not of my own accord. When you see a, a attractive member of the opposite sex that you potentially would like to engage in sexual activity with, and you feel and you feel the the excitement or any kind of arousal towards or attraction towards the individual, I don't get this because they've pulled every single bit of it out and internalised it. So although I am sexually capable of per participating in sexual activity physically or or whatever else the excitement that you get out of it and the thrill you get out of it, it looks alien to me so when you see somebody or married couples or couples engaging in romantic behavior or you see young teens or students for example romantic romanticizing or conversating in flirt, flirtatious manners or the almost just intimate to such an extent where they're intimate with each other i don't it looks alien to me it doesn't it just, i don't understand what it is it doesn't register correctly it just 
it's like hieroglyphs or, or, or something un, un, unreadable. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand what that is. And that's because they've internalised every single bit of my sexual prowess and every single bit of my sex power. And that's it to conclude. As I've stated, it, these, physically, I, I could potentially participate in sexual engagement sexually. There's no problems with erect, erectile dysfunction or any kind of these issues. The fact is they have... Re use mortification of the self for that long now over eight years i remember him specifically doing it in 2016 it's now 2024 they relativized all my sexual powers and interned it and killed the power of it it means since then i have had limited sex drives what i mean by this is as i've said you can participate physically in sexual engagements or whatever else but the the romantic side of it, erotic side of it, intimate side of it, the loving side of it, the 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 fact that the the man wants to to have relations with females for sexual gratification or any of these things, or just romance in general, they've pulled a lot out. They've pulled every single bit of my sex power out. That's an expensive decision to make with somebody's life as a bog standard constable or. Uh, probation officer that's a massive significant decision that they're making with somebody's life that kind of decisions needs to have a lot of a lot of convictions with that genre of of action so if you're a sex criminal predator that's been convicted multiple times then you might look at doing this kind of stuff do you know what i mean you might you might be able to manage to write to the home office and get them to justify or rationalize making these these massive decisions to somebody i've got to have done this to a 23-year-old man with his entire life in front of him that's quite clearly wanting to be sexual active, that's got his whole life in front of him, it's an absolute joke. South Yorkshire police are a complete joke. The, the crime that they've just committed by internalising somebody's sex drives is an imprisonable crime. And they've, they don't acknowledge it. You can go to jail. August 29th, 2024. I'm just getting on with my day-to-day -day life. I'm trying to get on with my day-to-day -day life and officers are still using mortification of self. And it's having a significant impact on my life, significant impact on progression in my life as it has done for quite some time. Like I said in the other video, I've recently just gone 10 months without touching my bank account entirely. That's just been in a complete mindless state. I've been homeless now 40 months and that's still attributed to the, the mindless and uh, branded state that I got left in eight years ago that's just proceeding to carry on getting okay, still mortification of self continues every day when I'm trying to get on my day-to-day -day life like it's some kind of joke just being used as a punch bag by bog standard officers destroying my life every day no drug use, no mental health issues. That's because they're manipulating the process to create punch bags that is lasting every their entire life, people's entire life. Uh, I don't know. It's illegal misconduct either way. I can't, as I said in majority of the videos, this misconduct and the reason why these individuals have not been held accountable or arrested eludes me completely. Stupid. Anyway, today. 29th of August 2024. Mortification of self and misuse of institutionalisation continues.